guys, good morning. Happy Thursday. I don't know where this week's gone. It's flying by. Hope you're all okay. Just gonna wait for a few to join us and then we'll get on with our clip-on crystal cluster earrings this morning. I'm really excited about showing you this one. Um, I designed these a little while ago when I was uh, down at the Totally Beads warehouse and Kitty had these lovely clip-on earrings and she said, I just don't know what to do with them. Had them for a while, we've got them in so many different colors, um, have a play. So I raided the warehouse and came up with um, these designs. So hopefully you will like them. Hi, good morning, Joe. Morning, Lisa. Hope you're all doing okay. What's everyone been up to this week? I know you've had a busy couple of days with Kitty on the Facebook Lives. Um, I don't think I've been with you since Monday morning. Um, I've had quite a few Crate and Craft TV shows. I'm there for the next two days as well. Um, so uh, Kitty had a few days, which is nice. Um, oh gosh, okay, let me uh, catch up with all of these before I um, move the phone down and then we'll get going. Good morning, Dean. Hi, Kieran. How are you today? I'm good, thank you, darling. How are you? Morning, Jan. Hi, Lucy. Morning, Karen, Elaine, Angela, Paula, Debbie. Morning, Sarah. Hope you're well. From Alison. Yes, I am. Thank you, lovely. How are you all doing? What's everyone been beading this week? What's everyone been up to? I know Kitty had um, the rainbow flat spiral and the orders uh, on the website just went crazy. You've absolutely loved them. I'm glad you've loved them as much as she did. Kitty's been sending me pictures for days of them. They look beautiful. Um, good morning, Bernie. Morning, Jean. Hi, Liz. Um, let us know what your favourite project's been so far as well. I've covered quite a few techniques, um, as has Kitty. We've covered everything from tiaras to all sorts. What else have we been doing? Bracelets, we've done some knotting, there's been some rivelies, uh, lots of weaving. So let us know what you've liked doing. Um, good morning, Dee. Hi, Marion. I know you're doing clip-on earrings. Uh, can they be for pierced ears as well? Yes, so I've got um, quite a few holes in my ears. Um, what I do, so I've, I've actually got three holes down at the bottom, but the clip-on earrings just sit over the top. So they're absolutely perfect if you just want something uh, nice and easy. Um, to put on. Hi, good morning, Angela. The popcorn necklace is your favourite at the moment. Oh, lovely. Uh, Camille, good morning, Sarah. Not too bright here. No, it's not here either. The sun is trying to get through. Yesterday, it just rained all day. Um, and you can tell I've been in the garden because all I kept on thinking was, oh, this will be really good for all the plants I've, I've put in <laughs> and for the grass. Uh, good morning, Lucy. Just starting project seven on the USB. Fantastic. Lucy, did you start at one and start making all your way through? Um, good morning, Jane. It's cold in Yorkshire. Yeah, it's a bit chilly here. Not, not too bad. Better than the last couple of days. Um, okay, so let me show you what we're going to make today. So these are my clip-on earrings. Now, I did make a black pair and I wear them on telly quite a lot. Um, but since we've moved, I haven't been able to unpack all my jewellery yet and all of my wardrobe bits and pieces. So um, I can't find my black ones, but I do have these in purple. Um, so these purple ones, let me open this up. So you can see it's a clip-on earring. So we have a dome at the front. I'll show you what the bare piece looks like in a moment. Um, and what I've done is created these gorgeous little clusters of crystals up on the top. So they're really easy to wear. You've got a domed sieve at the back, or a flat sieve, I should say. It's not a domed one. Um, but we do also have uh, cocktail rings that match these. So if you wanted to make earrings and um, a ring, then you could do that as well, exactly the same technique and pattern. And they're just little clip-on earrings, so they'll just go over your earlobe and squidge in. And I like to move mine down to the bottom a little bit, and then hopefully I've created enough clusters that it completely hides it as well. I love wearing these, and of course they're um, really easy if you don't have your ears pierced, or if you do, of course they will just clip on over the top. So I tend to move mine down, just like that, and then hopefully all of the finding is completely concealed as well. So I'm gonna show you how to make these. So I've got lots and lots of you with me, so I'm just gonna crack on, uh, turn the phone down. Let me just double check. There's no questions. Oh, good morning, mum. Everyone say good mum. Uh, good morning to Margaret Millsop. Uh, mum's watching every day, lover. Um, sun is shining for Margaret, lovely. Uh, Lucy, you started at one. 
amazing um yeah pop the pictures on the handmade group so um if you go onto the totally beads facebook page which you're on now this is where we're doing our live from um there is a section in there called groups so just up at the top you'll have things like photos videos events in the events you'll be able to see every subject that we're covering in all the facebook lives 10 o'clock every day between kitty and i and then there is also one called groups and in there there is a group called totally handmade there is now i think almost a thousand of you in there and you can share your pictures of what you're making. Lots of people share the pictures that they've made from our live videos or what you've been working on at home. If you get stuck with anything, it's a really good place to ask us questions as well. Kitty and I will keep an eye on the group and answer as many questions as we can. So um, it's a great place to go. Um, Kieran says, I can't choose, but I've only been watching for two weeks as I found out about Totally Beads then. Oh, amazing. Well, welcome to the group, Kieran. I'm glad you're enjoying them all. Uh, good morning, Maureen. Hi, Doris. Uh, morning. Morning, Natalie. Okay, lovely. So I don't think there's any questions, so I'm going to crack on. I'm going to turn you down and we will start going. Let me put a little light on. So we've got this, turn you around. Okay, so what I'm going to be working with now, um, the guys at Totally Beads have put on some bundles for you today. So these are the earrings that we're going to be using, the earring findings. And you can get um, five pairs for just £1.50, uh, which is an amazing price. Um, that would be mixed colours. Um, obviously, you'll get a pair in all of those, though. Um, and then if you want to get a set of every colour, which is all six colours, so we have uh, like the bright gold, the champagne, there's the rose, there is the uh, hematite or gunmetal, um, and the bright silver. I think there might be a bright silver and a rhodium as well so there's six in all um you can get um a pack of six pairs for just two pound so they are um fantastic to work on very inexpensive and then what i'm going to use today i've got uh, some size 15 seed beads i'm just going to use a silver lined in rose gold um, you could probably use an 11, um, but just change the numbers that you're going to be using. And then we also have these amazing crystals. Now, these are teeny tiny. I absolutely love working with them. They are only 2 mil by 5 mil rondelles. So they really are small. They make beautiful little bracelets um, or, of course, in little cluster packs like these, um, uh, for the earrings, you can use very few and actually get a really great effect. So this is the black one that I made my TV earrings in. Um, today, keeping in, um, oh, that would look nice together, wouldn't it? The rose and the coral. Um, so that I can wear them over telly um, over the weekend, I'm going to make some rose gold ones. So I've got my size 15 seed beads, which I've now spilt all over the place. There we go. And I'm going to use my rose gold uh, rondelles. Now, the rondelles are also um, on an offer today. So you'll get 10 mixed strands. And as you can see, I think these are 16 inch strands. They are super long. So uh, you'll be able to make so many pairs of earrings from these, probably with your matching rings and bracelets as well. Um, and they're normally £25, they're down to £15.99 today. Um, so it's going to be, hopefully, something for everybody's budget. You might just have beads that you want to use at home, um, but take advantage of getting these uh, clip-on earrings because they really are fantastic. So what I'm going to do is open up the earring so that that's going to expose the little sieve that we've got up at the top, like so. And this is where we're going to create our cluster. So I'm going to start in the middle. As you can see, if you think about this as um, a square, I'm going to start in the middle and then there is a square. Let me use my needle to point it out. I'm going to start in my centre hole here. Then there is a square that runs along the outside of that centre hole. So three by three by three and then three up at the top. And then I've got three on the outside of each edge as well. So we're going to start with bigger, taller clusters in the middle, and then we're going to work out the way using smaller clusters. And I'll probably double up on these as well to fill some of these holes, because you can see there isn't a hole on the edge. And what I wanted to do was completely hide the earring itself so that when you're wearing them, um, none of the actual sieve is exposed. And of course, when you're wearing them, you can't even tell that they're clip-ons either. 
So I've got my needle, my beading needle. I'm using a size 10 needle. They'll go through my 15s absolutely fine. Let's just double check before we start going. Yep. Okay, and I've got about an arm span of thread, so I don't really want to work with too much. And I've colour coordinated my thread to my earring finding because some of that is going to be exposed at the back. And then to begin with, what I'm going to do is go um, down, sorry, hold it in the middle. Excuse my finger, that's my, my baddie finger from last week. If you're watching the other lives, you know what happened. The dog mistook my finger for his rope chew toy. Hey ho, it's healing up okay. Right, so I'm gonna go uh, just to the left of my center hole. I've left a little tail here and we'll knot that in in a moment. And I'm gonna bring my needle up through the very middle, like so. And then I'm going to add on five of my, my seed beads. So these are size, um, size 15, so they are the smallest beads that we work with. Uh, three, four, five. I'm gonna pick up one of my rondelles and then another five. One, two, three, four five and then I'm going to go back down through exactly the same hole so what these beads will do is create a little loop up on top like so and that's going to hold it all in place and then I'm just going to come up um, through one of the other holes like so so I've just gone to uh, the left and then I'm going to tie these two together so I'm just going to create an overhand knot pulling it together make sure you don't have any of your ear finding trapped in that knot or any of your beads from the loop that we have just created either. So just make sure they're not gonna get in the way. There we go. And then once we've finished, we will uh, weave this tail back through our work, but for now, that's gonna secure that nice and neatly. Okay, so this has given me my very center like so and then we're just going to start embellishing around the outside so I came up through the hole to the left of it so this time I'm going to add on four seed beads one two three four so we had five for our center now I'm going to do four uh, one two three four and back down through the same hole that I came out of so each time all we're doing is looping on these lovely little clusters then I'm going to come up through the bead uh, sorry through the hole next to it and repeat the same thing so because I'm on this outer square now from my center hole I'm just going to continue to add all the way around my center and I'm going to add four a crystal and four and come down and each time just make sure that those loops aren't going to start catching the ones from before. And you can see we're already beginning to get a nice little cluster. Uh, you can keep them looser if you need to, just to open up that space. And when you pull that through tightly, just tighten up that tension and that's gonna make sure there aren't any gaps in between. So another four, a rondelle, and four, two, and what you'll see, and hopefully what these videos are doing for you all, is that projects really don't need to be difficult. And I think sometimes when you look at a finished project and you just think, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm new to beading or I haven't been weaving yet, I couldn't do that. Once you see it made, they really are so simple. It's just a case of pattern repeats very often. And as you can see here, I'm not using any difficult materials. I'm not using any difficult um, bead counts. It's really, really simple. But because I'm using the right color beads, the right color finding, you can get that sort of um, illusion. When you look at it, you're not quite sure how it's made. And hopefully what these videos are doing, I saw quite a few of you commented on Kitty's um, flat spiral bracelet. You thought, oh, I, I never realised how easy this could be to do. And now I've seen it done, I've realised I could do it. So hopefully doing these lives um, and doing these little tutorial videos, we're really just breaking down those fear barriers for you guys. And letting you know that projects don't have to be difficult to still have that satisfaction of making them and have that wow factor once you've made it as well. So as you can see, I'm just making my way all the way along, still adding my fours because we're on that um, outer square from my center. One, two, three, four. And then each time going down through that same hole. And already you can see, because I'm using the same color um, seed beads as my crystals, um, you obviously get that sparkle 
which is really beautiful, but you could also use contrasting colors. So in my blue one here, I've got um, a much lighter um, baby blue. Uh, it's got sort of an opal finish on it. And then I've used a darker seed bead. And then reversing that, I've got a, a darker crystal and a lighter seed bead. So you can achieve some really different looks. With my black ones that I made, um, I just used a matte black seed bead. And then of course the crystals give you that beautiful uh, sparkle and because I'm using a matte black underneath it, it makes them shine even more, uh, which is really nice. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we're nearly around our outer edge. I've just got two more holes here to fill. So I've got the center one here. Oh, I've only got one more to fill. And then if you need to, you can just keep on moving them out the way, making sure that all of those are filled. Just keep that tension each time you'll see that I'm holding it nice and tight uh, as I work on the other one, just to make sure that there aren't any gaps in the beads. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I can't ever count and talk at the same time. Boring, I know, but... Okay, so I've done the last ones here, making sure when you pull that loop tightly that there aren't any of the other clusters included. And as you can see, that's now giving me a really nice shape. So what we're going to do now is work around the outside edge. So I've got... Um, is it two or three on the outside edges? Three. So I've got my, there we go, three holes here. One, two, three. Three at the top. If I pull that down, you can see those exposed and on each of the sides. And because we have that little gap in the middle, I'm actually going to add two clusters through every hole on that outside edge. And what that will do is create just that slightly wider band to hide the findings on the inside and also create that slightly frillier edge. So I'm going to come uh, through that very bottom hole and this time I'm only going to add three seed beads. So this is how we'll get the domed effect. So three and a rondelle and three and then through the same hole. So just as we have been. And then, of course, I can't come back up through that hole to add my second one because I will just be reversing the step that I have just completed. So what you can always do is go through the hole next to it. So I'm just moving to the right-hand side. Add your new cluster of three, and then we'll go back and back again. So it's like you're taking a little side step and then going back on yourself. So three, a crystal, and my three down through that hole we've just exited from, which is my second, uh, let me make sure I get the right one, my second in that cluster. And then I'm going to take a step back to the left, so that's the first hole that we just filled, and I'll add my second cluster of three. So one, two, three, my crystal, and three. So now on my first original hole, I have two of my clusters. Now I'll come back up through that second one, add my second cluster on here as well. And you should see that that will hide the finding around the outside. Oh, come on. Down through there. Can anyone else hear my birds tweeting in the garden? So you can see that I've got that lovely outer edge now. The finding is completely hidden. I've got two on the first, two on the second. So now I'll move through that third hole and just make sure as it starts to get a little bit fuller, just make sure you're not going through any of your beads. You can see here, sometimes my needle's actually going through some of those beads. So just make sure when you go through the hole, you're not going through any of your seed beads. It might be easier to start looking at the base so that you can come up through. And then we'll just repeat all of that. Uh, three of your seed beads, your crystal, and three of your seed beads. That's gonna give me my first loop on this third hole here. 
And again, we can't now add our second because of course it will undo that securing loop. So we'll step across over to the other edge and do that one there. Okay, I'm just gonna check up on a few of your comments um, just to make sure that I'm not missing out on anything. Oh, thank you, I think Kitty's watching, so she's probably um, keeping up with all of your questions. Um, Lords, didn't see how you anchored the thread at the beginning. Did you do a knot around the ring? So what I did, you'll be able to go back, once I finish the live, you'll be able to go back and have a little look. I moved one step away, came down through, which gave me a thread up at the top, and then I came up through the middle. I created one of my beaded loops, came across another hole, and then I tied my threads together. And what we'll do, my thread here, because it's up on top, because I didn't want too much mess underneath, so as you can see, because this is exposed, you could always put a little bit of felt on it if you wanted a softer finish um, and to hide all of this, but that way I'm keeping all of this bit not free and, and quite tidy. So once I've finished, I will take my thread, reattach my needle, and I'll go back through some of that work uh, to weave that into the beads themselves. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, if you've got any other questions or Kitty hasn't answered, let me know. Um, I'm keeping an eye on the comments now. Sorry, I've been busy counting and beading away. So I haven't been able to have a little look, but hopefully you're enjoying them. I absolutely love making these. It's a very simple and rather quick project as well, which is nice. So now I've added that first one, I'm gonna take that side swipe again, going back to my first hole on this section and adding my second cluster for these. And when you're using your small seed beads, just spread them out a little bit. Um, it makes it a lot easier to be able to hook them onto your needle rather than working, especially if they're silver lined or they've got finishes on them. A lot of the time the beads are a bit harder, uh, sorry, the holes are a bit harder to see. Again, just make sure that you're not looping in any of your previous loops. And because you're getting this finish, nothing particularly needs to be that perfect either. Um, you can see you're getting this lovely cluster. If you made any mistakes, I'm pretty sure they're going to be hidden and they're not going to be so obvious. So things like adding one extra bead on or because it's a bit of an irregular cluster, you really don't need to worry. So it's a great one to start practicing with. And if you're not too confident yet and you don't want all of your work completely exposed, then things like this are ideal. Now, of course, because you've got so many of your ear wires in the sets, what you could actually do, and I should have made one up for you, but you can even use these as little um, necklace embellishments. So, if you've got something like a beaded necklace, you can actually end up hanging these on and using them as pendants. So you could have several and have them in between, or you could just use these as little clusters. They look really lovely as pendants as well. So think outside the box. An earring doesn't always have to be an earring. Um, you can use them for so many different things. And then of course you can remove it and uh, use them as an earring if you want to, if you've been using it as a pendant. We do also have these sieve bases for rings. So you can use exactly the same technique if you don't wear earrings. You can use the same technique to create a cocktail ring. So you could have a full set as well, which is really nice. Okay, right, so long as you're not too bored, I'm gonna finish this one off and then I'll show you how to tie your threads in at the end. Um, I've only got a few more to go. But as you can see, it's just a simple pattern repeat. There's really not too much more to show you, but I'll show you how to finish because I know some of you are new. Some of these uh, techniques are new to you. Just make sure you're not going through any of those beads. You only want to come through the hole. And each time just pulling that tension tight so that there's no gaps in between the previous loop. And as you can see, you don't actually use many materials either. So things like your crystal bundles that we've got today, 10 strands of crystals, um, are gonna last you a very long time. And if you're doing something like this, they've got high impact, but you don't need to use many of them to achieve that, which I think is really lovely. You could do these with any sizes of beads, but of course, being that it's gonna be an earring, you don't want it too, too big. 
There we go. And you can see that it's hiding all of that base. So it's just going to give you that lovely little cluster. Let me just have a look at some of your comments. Oh, lovely. I think a lot of you are asking about needles and threads. Morning, Sarah. I really need my hand slapping. I called you by another name. Oh, don't worry. Totally missed it. <laughs> so don't you worry. Uh, Kitty sells good needles. Yeah, really good beading needles on the website if you need them. I'm sure she'll be popping up um, your uh, replies to all of your comments as well once she gets a chance. And I'll have a look once the video is finished as well. So I'm using a size 10 beading needle. Um, you can use, I, I saw that somebody had asked a question the other day as well. Could we do like a little, um, almost like a glossary of terms? Um because some of you have, um, have found us um, during isolation and while we've been doing these Facebook Lives and you've come across us purely by chance, um, but things like your beading needles or what threads to use or, you know, we're, we're using all these uh, terminologies for findings and, and the materials that we're using. So I'm going to speak to Kitty. I'm sure we'll have a FaceTime later on to plan a few bits and pieces. And we've got some TV shows coming up. Um, we've now been asked to do a show next Wednesday. Um, one of the other suppliers couldn't uh, make it in. So um, I'm going to be covering that uh, for that supplier and I'll be going in um, for Kitty so that she doesn't have to travel to Peterborough. Um, so we've got next Wednesday and then we've got the Wednesday after as well. Um, but Kitty and I have been doing lots of FaceTimes. I normally go down for two to three days, sometimes more a month. Um, just to do a bit of project planning, um, to have a look at what materials are new um, and what we could do with them to plan some shows. And obviously I haven't been able to do that. Gosh, I don't think, have I even been down this year? Yeah, we had some workshops. So maybe January, February time. Don't think I've been down since then. Um, but we do daily Facebook, uh, FaceTime uh, for Kitty and I planning the lives, planning the projects, planning the shows. So I will ask her about this glossary of terms um, and uh, materials and findings and all those things that we're using so that if you are new and you just need that little bit more information, hopefully you will be able to get it there as well. Kitty says, yes, Sarah, I'll call you after. <laughs> Lovely. We normally finish the lives, make a cup of tea um, and then get on chatting. Right, so... I think I'm just on my last ones now. And as you can see, it gets a little bit fuller, a little bit harder to see those holes. But so long as you're covering all of that dome, you're going to get that really lovely effect. Oh, Natalie says, yes, yeah, you came down for the chainmail workshop. I did. Gosh, that feels like a very long time ago. Um, a lot has happened since then. Um, and I'm sure once everything's done and we're all safe to do so, I'm sure we'll get some of those workshops up and running again. But in the meantime, you're just having these one-to-one -one little workshops, which hopefully is getting you your little beady fix. Okay, so if you find that there are any gaps, have a look at your piece. I've just got two more to add in here. If you find that there's any gaps, just go back through and fill any of them if you need to, so that you're still getting that lovely perfect finish. I'm just on my final one here. And I did actually find that because you've got the little arm of the hinge here, you could always add a slightly longer cluster to cover that up. You'll see when I tried them on at the beginning of the video, sometimes you can see the arm if it's a little bit higher up your ear. Um, and I like those to be hidden. So you could always add a couple of extra clusters on here. You could go that little bit longer even untangle that one got caught up you could even go a little bit longer and add so you see I'm going to add another one in here you can see that I've got that gap I think it's just the second one I haven't added yet straight up through and that will hide it so as you can see they they take shape really really quickly nice and easy to do it's just a pattern repeat you still get that lovely dome because we've got the uh, taller clusters in the middle working around that outer edge with the smaller clusters and doubling them up on those outside edges as well so if i pull that tightly i think that will probably give us seem a little bit lopsided don't i ah there we go so you can move those outer ones out 
and of course you've got that lovely full center and if there's anywhere that you want to fill then you can go back and fill those in afterwards i'm going to just rotate those ones around yeah i think i'm happy with that okay so finishing off your threads what i'm going to do is come up through my work and i'm just going to tie a little half hitch knot so what you want to be able to do is grab hold of one of your loops and sorry, this is probably a little bit harder to show you because they're silver lines. They're going to be quite bright. But you want to go um, just through the thread path. So just like I showed you the other day when we were creating, what were we doing? We were working with fire polish, weren't we? I was doing the woven fire polish. So you just go underneath a thread path, creating that little loop, bringing your needle through that loop. And then I'm just going to pull this down to the base because I don't want it to be sticking out at the top. I'm going to hold that down so that it's going to attach on naughty thread. Attach on to one of the loops next to it. And that will give me an invisible half hitch knot. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm just going to randomly work through the base. Again, making sure you don't get hold of any of those loops. And I'm going to take this up and through. And I just found that this was the easiest way to lose, but also to gain, to lose the thread, but to gain some extra stability in there as well. And then what you can do is a little half hitch knot on the bottom, if you would like. So underneath the thread path next to your thread, leaving a loop, pull that through that loop, bring that in like so. And then I'm going to come up through a few beads. So I am going through the actual beads themselves and over to another loop. So like I said, nothing about this one is perfect. It doesn't matter if you're not the neatest of beaders. So when I come to cut the threads, I'm pulling up with the tail and I'm pushing down with my cutters. That way you will get a really nice, neat finish. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with this one. So this was my original tail thread, which should be somewhere in the middle. I will attach my uh, needle onto there and weave it back into my work. And as you can see, once you then close that off, you've got a really beautiful cluster. So you can do it in any colours. Remember, we've got the set starting on the website today from just £1.50. You can use contrasting colours, you can use any of the um, sets from your bundle, and you can even, if I move you over, you can even attach them onto a strung necklace so that you have those lovely little clusters as a pendant as well. So there you go. That's it for today, my cluster crystal earrings so you've got your two by five millimeter crystal rondelles on the website today they are a pack of 10 mixed colors they're beautiful to work with really teeny tiny but as you can see you can get lovely effects very very simply um they are normally 25 pounds they are on sale for 15.99 today and then you also have your ear findings so these are the lovely clip-on earrings that we've been using they've got those dome uh, sieves as you can see and we've also got cocktail rings exactly the same so you can make matching sets um five pieces so that would just be mixed colors obviously all pairs five pairs so ten pieces they're all mixed colors or if you would like one in every um of the color metals that we do that's six pairs uh, five pairs are only one pound fifty and six pairs for two pounds so hopefully something to fit all of your budgets you might even be able to use beads that you've got left over in your stash as well but i really hope you enjoyed making them i can't remember uh what we're doing tomorrow let me have a look uh oh it must be kitty because i'm at the telly um what day is tomorrow friday oh brick stitch earrings tomorrow so another ear um they are for pierced ears um and it's a much more intricate weave so if you want to up that game now you've seen these nice and simple have a little play with these today um tomorrow is the brick stitch earrings and they're absolutely stunning um so hope you all enjoyed i will see you when am i next with you i'm with you on sunday um i'm going to be making one of my bicone tennis bracelets so i'm going to be using size 11 beads i think um and a four mil rondel uh, a four mil bicone and we're going to make a really nice beautiful little petite um tennis bracelet so a nice little weave in fact if you matched up your colors from your earrings today it would be a beautiful accompaniment to those as well okay so i really hope you enjoyed thank you so much for um joining me for all your comments as well i can see it's been super busy i'm sorry if i've missed any of your comments um 
I will go back and reply to you all as well. Um, Camille, hope you have a great day. Thank you so much, Camille. You too. Thank you so much for joining me, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the earrings. Um, I'm going to finish my other rose gold one now so that I can wear them on telly tomorrow. Um, and I will see you all on Sunday. Take care. Stay safe. Lots of love.